<laughs> I'm late. I'm late for a very important date. I'm running to the fencing hall. There is no way I can make it though. I'm not just a few minutes late. When I woke up from my nap in the garden, the sun had already set. The class was in the afternoon. The time it was scheduled for is already long since past. What a disaster. And on the first day of classes too. I wish I could think of anything other than all those princesses waiting for me all afternoon. Leading an army into battle was never this stressful. I slow my pace as I get closer to the fencing hall. I don't want to have to face them out of breath, or at all, really. Don't go that way yet. Before I can reply, a hand clamps over my mouth, stifling any cry of protest. I find myself dragged into the bushes. Well, this is more like it. Who's there? I managed to mumble through my assailant's hand. I could swear it was Lynn I heard. Now I heard whispering in the direction I was headed. Wait, your majesty, stop. That's Finn's voice. Should she really just say your majesty? He is here? Could he have come to watch the fencing class? Why would Lynn stop me from getting there if the emperor is waiting for me? No, that can't be it. Why would Finn and his majesty be outside alone if he were there to see the princess's fence? I don't think I want to know what the Emperor is doing here. But I can't leave right now. There isn't any way to do it unseen. I, it would be too hard to explain why I was lurking in the bushes. I can see Finn's uniform through the bushes. But Finn is obscuring my view of the other figure. I can't see his face clearly. But I can see enough. I am now certain that it really is His Majesty the Emperor. They are standing close together. I can't hear what His Majesty is whispering to Finn, but that she is shaking her head in a obvious denial or refusal. Please, Your Majesty, His Excellency Arel Rice could be here at any moment. We can't be seen together. Please go before he sees you here. Finn is agitated and her voice rose briefly, or I wouldn't have heard that much of their conversation. No matter how hard I try, I can't catch the rest of their words, and I can't get closer without being noticed. Time seems to slow to a snail's pace as a, as a wait for his majesty to go. That's it, I can't stand waiting. I start to inch closer in an attempt to hear what is being said. My progress stops when a cold hand grasps my wrist. Not yet. Lynn whispering in my ear. She squeezes my hand to make sure she has my attention. When she sees me focused on her, she shakes her head to forestall questions. A lone shadow passes by our hiding place. Another shadow approaches but doesn't pass us by. Two shadows emerge from the shrubbery, holding hands like young children. Princess Lynn, Mr. Rice, there you are. I apologize for being so late, Finn. Let me lead you to the fencing hall. She smiles at Lynn, who is still holding my hand. Please to return to your rooms now, Lynn. As you wish. Shouldn't Lynn be the one giving orders to Finn? Be the one, and Finn be the one obeying them? I like Lynn too, to be totally honest with you. Lynn lets go of my hand, turns and walks away without another word. Finn opens the door of the fencing hall and steps inside. They've left me with no choice but to follow Finn. Everything about what I just saw is still bothers me, though. This hall went unused for a long time. The servants worked hard to clean it out, but cleanliness seems more out of place than the dirt in the training hall. Breathing in, I catch only the sweet smell of flowers where I should find the smell of hard-earned sweat. Suddenly, I hear the ghost of a sound. 
Steel colliding with steel echoes throughout the silent building. Hello, Iridescent Lily! The princesses? I can't imagine the princesses ever made such a ruckus. What I'm hearing are the same sounds from my days training as a squire. I get it now. My soldiers are waiting behind that door. The ones who died but aren't at peace. I would see them again if only I went inside. The sound stops as suddenly as it began. The restless dead are taunting me from beyond the grave. Ha! Some brave warrior I am. Here I am about to draw my sword to face off against an empty hallway. I don't even have a sword anymore. Everything is silent again, as it should be. When I'm not holding fences classes, this is just an abandoned building. Finn is waiting for me up ahead. She saw me stop. She is waiting patiently rather than urge me to catch up. I pick up the pace. Sorry about that, Finn. When I approach, she jumps back as if startled. Her face is cloaked in shadows. Standing alone with her in the dark is jarring. It brings to mind the image of her and the Emperor in a similar situation just a few moments before. Now, like then, something is wrong. Wait here! Oh, wrong voice. <laughs> Doing that a lot tonight. Wait, where are the princesses? They've already left. No, that's a lie. I didn't inform them of your class schedule in the first place. They weren't looking forward to your class anyway. Finn's smile is filled with meaning. Bitterness, nervousness, and fear all hide behind it. If you arrived in time, I would not have been waiting outside and would not have met. But you didn't keep your word to be here on time. The princesses don't need you, Mr. Rice. But there is someone in the garden who truly needs your help. Me. Finn, I don't understand. Why didn't you tell them about my class? What were you planning to do when I showed up to teach it? Didn't you tell me early today that I am also your student? Didn't you promise to teach me whatever I wanted to know? Please teach me. Da -da. Da -da 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 -da. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, didn't. Finn removes her dress. Her pale skin shines in the light of the moon. I'm startled by the realization of what this young girl expects me to teach her. I asked around and finally discovered Finn is twelve. I can't possibly think her of her like she wants me to. I should look away, but my eyes are glued to her for a different reason. Her body is as slim as any other child's. She looks fragile. Seeing her so vulnerable breaks my heart. Without her dress on, I can see that her muscles have been hardened by years of work. She looks like a tiny, frightened angel. I move closer. I can't help but to want to comfort this gentle little angel. Finn starts to tremble where she stands. It reminds me of a similar reaction she had earlier in the garden. Could it be Finn isn't just afraid of a specific men, or men she doesn't know well, but all men? Finn, have you heard of androphobia? It means an abnormal fear, or hatred of men. Does that describe your problem, Finn? I'm afraid of her answer. I don't want to think that this gentle angel could be afraid of me. This little maid doesn't usually dare to defend herself or express an opinion. She would certainly keep her fear and hatred bottled up inside. How did such a damaged little girl become the head housekeeper of the oblivious garden? How did she survive the brutal infighting in the royal palace to reach such a coveted position? How does she bear such a heavy burden on those delicate shoulders? I ignore her visible shaking and hold her tightly in my arms. Mr. Rice? Call me a rel, Finn. 
I know you're frightened. It's okay. I want to help. How can I help? I'm dizzy, but I feel like my angel is smiling on me. She touches my mouth with her hand. If you want to help me, please just hold me tight. I sit there, holding her in the dark for hours. Finn's fearful trembling slowly diminishes. Eventually, I must have fallen asleep. Oh, that's starting to annoy me. Villager. Okay, yeah, that's it, that's all right. Uh, Finn? Where are you going with so many wired flowers? These are a gift for my big brother. Big brother? But you're only only child. Oh, you mean that general? The troops he has stationed here are so well disciplined. We all feel much safer with them camping here. Hey. They'd be a big help preparing for the festival. You should invite them to celebrate with us, Finn. Big brother? Your group should stall here at Saladri to lure the enemy out. The other troops should pretend to retreat. Oh, um, hello. Look, I picked these wildflowers for you. With a bitter smile, the young general gently accepts the flowers she offered him. Thank you, but you shouldn't stay in the camp for long. We're at war, after all. The enemy could launch a surprise attack at any moment. I, I, I want to be just like Big Brother when I grow up. These flowers are a lovely gift. There is a festival today, right? How about this? I'll go to the festival with you, but I want to see where these lovely flowers came from first. So wait for me there, okay? All right. They came from a meadow outside the village. I'll wait for you there. General, it's all right. If one less person dies here tonight because of what I just said, her future in her own hands now, though. Big brother, where are you? Aurel, are you awake, Your Excellency? Uh, oh, Finn, good morning, wait. Wait, how did I get back here? Was that you I heard singing just now? I I carried you back here after you fell asleep in the fencing hall. Um, you heard me? Her face flushed with embarrassment when I asked if she was singing. Earlier, when I fell asleep in the garden beside you, I dreamt of the past. I'm never sure if what I saw was just a recurring dream or a memory I can't recall when I'm awake. A lot, Shizzy, a lot. I was singing in the dream. I have such a hard time remembering anything, but maybe the song is part of my memory. If so, it's one of the only things I remember. In the dream, I feel like I'm waiting for someone. I can't remember who he is. I always wake up before I learn if he showed up or not, but this time I felt like he did. Then that must be what really happened. I'm glad you remembered more of your past, Finn. You really think so? She seems relieved at the idea. This little girl living in the garden of the princesses is growing livelier with each interaction and more and more important to me. I start to rise from my bed. Stop! You can't get up yet! Lay down! She rushes across the room and pulls the quilt over my head to stop me from getting up. Are you going to smother me? I, it's not ready yet, Your Excellency. You can't look yet. What are you doing over there, Finn? She makes a face and sticks out her tongue at me. It's so messy in your room. What are you doing? You don't have to tidy up the room for me. Finn? The sun is shining directly in my eyes, but squinting I can just see the little maid. She's holding a black jacket. That's one of my jackets. She smiles to me hearing she smiles to me hearing my voice. Yes, it is. She doesn't make any move to put it away. 
She's starting to act weird. Finn? Do you want to put it on? Still smiling, she shakes her head. It doesn't belong to me. I've never seen it before now, but... I don't know why, but it smells familiar. I think I smelled something similar long ago. It makes me feel safe. Isn't that strange? I'll just put it away now. Arel. Oh, sorry, wrong voice. Arel, what are you? I quietly take the coat and put it on Finn. It's yours if you will accept it. I will always help you if you accept my help. Why do you want to help me? I'm just a maid. There's no reason for you to. Or... It because you like me? Like, like me? No! I stop her. I'm not teasing you, Finn. Some noblemen enjoy toying with their servants' affections. I'm not that callous. I care about you. I feel responsible for you. My father taught me that everyone is alive for a reason. I hate to watch you putting yourself down. You matter, Finn. You aren't any less important to me than anyone else. I will be by your side until you find your reason to be alive is. The look on her face is too complicated to label. Joy and sorrow dance across it together. Thank you. Just then, the wind blows something in through the open windows. A rain of flower petals. The sound of Finn's laughter and the shower of red petals fill the room. Surprise! What are these? They're a type of wildflower. They look plain, but they always have been my favourite. I thought you would enjoy them as well, so I got a bunch for you. I hope you like them. I close my eyes and lead down as she stands up on her tiptoes. But only cool hands touch my hair. When I open my eyes, I see a wildflower in her hands. Here you go. It was on your head. Big brother, look. I picked these wildflowers for you. As I was about to take the flower, I heard a child's voice in my mind. Oh. When I regain consciousness, the flower is on the ground. Finn's smile is overshadowed by a dawning look of horror and realisation. Big brother? Finn? I had a flashback. A giant monster dressed all in black devoured my home and the whole village. The monster had a warm smile, but he brought a catastrophe to my village and death followed in its wake. I want to go home, Avril. Yes. Home. That's what I want. That's what I've been remembering. If you really want to help me, help me escape the oblivious garden. Before I can gather my thoughts, Finn embraces me. Her hands are innocent at first, but not for long. I push her back in panic. Finn, stop! Don't you like me? I do like you. I like you, Finn. You're a great friend. I want to help you, not take advantage of you. I didn't think you would reject me. You keep saying you just want to help me. Can I have just one kiss to seal your promise? Nothing else. Let me trust you, Aurel. 